Welcome to the skills demonstration video for the localization and removal of deeply placed contraceptive implants. This video intends to build the capacity of clinicians who provide implant services to be able to locate and perform a difficult removal of a deeply placed implant. It also builds capacity for sonographers and other healthcare providers who participate in localizing deep implants. There are two parts to this video. Part 1. Localization of the implant. And Part 2. Removal of the implant, which includes preparation, removal of implant with ultrasound guidance, and removal of the implant with markings on the arm of a localized deep implant. When a client comes into the clinic for a removal of an implant, discuss with her that return to fertility is immediate and counsel her on selecting another family planning method if she would like to continue using contraception. Begin by confirming consent from the client for the removal. If she would like another implant placed, Make sure that the equipment for insertion is available at the same time the current implant system is removed. An implant that is deeply palpable or non-palpable might have been deeply inserted or has migrated. Understanding of the surrounding anatomy is important because of close proximity to vital structures. The neurovascular bundle is typically located in the groove between the biceps and triceps muscles. Avoid dissecting directly above this groove to avoid damage to the neurovascular bundle here. Achieve localization of the implant before attempting removal. Begin palpating for the implant by pressing near the proximal end to locate the tip of the distal end near the scar. If the implant is deeply palpable, you will not need ultrasound localization. Mark the position of the two ends of the implant. Then mark the center between the two points for the incision site. If the implant is non-palpable, you will need ultrasound to locate the implant before attempting removal. If the ultrasound exam cannot be done in the clinician's suite, the clinician should accompany the client to the ultrasound exam in order to verify implant location for subsequent removal. The clinician may work with the sonographer for the removal under ultrasound guidance, or the clinician may complete localization and removal individually. If available, it is optimal to use a linear array probe with a high range of frequency from 10 to 18 megahertz with a sterile probe cover. This probe or transducer will give a better resolution at a more shallow depth, showing a better image for finding the implant. If there is only a curvilinear probe with a lower frequency range of 2 to 5 megahertz available, Use a large amount of gel with light pressure while scanning to increase visibility of the implant. In the absence of both of these probes, another option is to use a transvaginal probe which has an intermediate frequency range from 5 to 13 MHz. In this video, we will demonstrate the ultrasound localization technique with the lower frequency 3 to 5 MHz curvilinear probe since this is the most commonly found probe in obstetric and gynecology clinics. If the implant is not definitely identified or shadowed with a lower frequency probe, refer the client to a center with the recommended frequency range of 10 to 18 MHz probe. When using any of these probes to scan for the implant, be sure to have the highest frequency selected on the machine. Initially, you can look with an increased depth to help identify the acoustic shadow. Then, the depth should be switched to the shallowest possibility around 1 to 2 centimeters, indicated by the depth indicators on the screen. 
optimize the image by adjusting the overall gain and individual gain to get better attenuation through the tissue. This will increase the contrast and allow you to see the implant and acoustic shadow more distinctly. Scan for the implant in the transverse plane of the arm with the probe perpendicular to the implant. In this plane, look for the implant's acoustic shadow seen underneath the implant. Identify the actual implant as an echogenic white spot found at the top of the shadow. If available, turn on color to evaluate for nearby vessels. If the ultrasound study demonstrates blood vessels or other vital structures less than one centimeter to the implant, consult with a vascular or neurologic surgeon or a surgeon experienced in complex surgery to perform a collaborative procedure. Let's look at some different examples of ultrasound scans. This implant is located about one centimeter from the skin surface. This is a correctly placed implant close to the skin surface. This implant is one centimeter deep and was located using a transvaginal probe. This is a two-rod implant system. This implant is located fused within the muscle fascia. This implant is located just below the muscle fascia in the biceps muscle. This implant is located deep in the biceps muscle. If the implant is found by ultrasound to be under the muscle fascia, consult a more experienced provider or surgeon before attempting removal. A non-palpable implant is still subcutaneous unless otherwise noted by a sonographer. Identify the ends of the implant by following the echogenic spot towards each end until it disappears. Mark the locations of both ends on the skin when the implant disappears from the screen with a surgical marker or a pen. Because it is challenging to mark the skin through gel, you may use an untipped pen to gently press on the skin and leave a slight indentation marking on the skin through the gel. Then wipe the gel off and use the indentations to mark the location with a marker or a pen. Then re-gel the area to measure the depth of the implant. Identify the optimal spot for incision directly over the middle of the implant using minimal pressure on the ultrasound probe. Document the depth measurement at this central optimal incision site and mark the skin at this site. It is important to keep in mind that this depth may be significantly shallower than the implant actually is because of compression from the ultrasound probe. In this case, the depth measurement was 0.3 centimeters on ultrasound. However, the implant was found to be 1.5 centimeters deep during dissection. Determine if the implant removal can occur under direct ultrasound visualization, which is ideal or if the client must return to the clinic for removal with markings on the arm. Inform the client to not wash or smudge the markings off the arm. If the implant is not visualized with any of the available equipment, consult a provider more experienced in localization techniques. Assemble these instruments and supplies for the removal. Antiseptic solution with bowl. Sterile gloves. Sterile drape. Local anesthetic. 
a syringe, ideally with a 2 cc capacity and needle long enough to get to the depth of the implant. Scalpel Curved mosquito forceps Straight forceps Ringed forceps or modified vasectomy clamps The ringed portion here is 2.2 millimeters wide and fits snugly around the width of the implant. Sharp dissecting forceps Sterile gauze Sterile skin closure Pressure bandage Create a sterile field by placing a sterile drape underneath the arm and prep the planned incision area with antiseptic solution. Here, a sterile tray, gloves, and field was used for sterile technique. Alternatively, sterilely drape the area around the incision site. If using ultrasound for the removal, put a sterile cover or condom or sterile glove on the ultrasound probe. Place gel directly on the probe and on the skin. Use ultrasound to visualize the injection of anesthetic. Ensure the injection tract goes down to the implant. Inject underneath the implant and in the vicinity of the implant to fully anesthetize the incision site. Make a longitudinal 3 to 5 mm incision. The incision should be parallel to and directly above the middle of the implant. Bluntly dissect the subcutaneous tissue by opening and closing the straight or mosquito forceps to the depth of the implant. Continue monitoring the area of dissection and depth with concurrent or real-time visual from the ultrasound. Ultrasound machines have a slight delay, so the clinician should proceed slowly and wait for the ultrasound to catch up to the clinical actions. After reaching the implant through dissection and confirmed on ultrasound, use the modified vasectomy clamps to grasp the implant perpendicularly and bring the implant with the surrounding fibrous tissue to the skin surface. If performing the removal without ultrasound guidance, begin by identifying the markings for the two ends of the implant, the central incision point, and the measured depth of the central incision point. If the implant is palpable, begin by injecting approximately 2 milliliters of 1% lidocaine underneath the implant and a small amount in the vicinity of the planned incision. Use only as much as needed. If the implant is not palpable, inject approximately 2 milliliters of lidocaine towards the presumed location of the implant and in the vicinity of the planned dissection. Make a longitudinal 3 to 5 mm incision directly above the middle of the implant. If you have a two-rod system, 
make the incision about one third of the way up from the distal end of the implants, where they are closer together, and in between the two implants. If only one of the implants is palpable, make the incision above the palpable one. Bluntly dissect the tissue by opening and closing the straight or mosquito forceps to the depth of the implant. Use the other hand to palpate the implant and guide the dissection. If the implant is deeper than one centimeter, the incision may need to be extended to one centimeter long. Non-palpable implants rely on dissection technique and visualizing the implant, which is often covered and surrounded by fibrotic tissue. The provider might visualize the implant through the incision or feel the implant with the forceps or palpation through the incision. Reassure the client while monitoring her pain and discomfort during the dissection and removal. If needed, add additional anesthetic to the incision. After reaching the implant through dissection, use ringed forceps to grasp the implant and any surrounding fibrotic tissue perpendicularly and bring it to the level of the incision. Palpation is useful to help guide the implant into the forceps. Grasping the implant with straight forceps might crush it and lead to fracture of the implant during removal. The ringed portion of the ringed forceps fits snugly around the width of the implant. If this is a two-rod system, the surrounding tissue will sometimes contain both implants. If not, the other one is very close by and should be reached through the same incision site. Bluntly dissect off the fibrous tissue formed around the implant. Dissection may be done with gauze or by scraping the tissue with the blunt side of a scalpel blade along the length of the implant to uncover it. Pull the implant out from where it is exposed with straight or ringed forceps. Measure the implant and confirm the whole rod has been removed. A single rod implant is 4 cm long. A two rod system ranges between 4.2 and 4.4 cm long. Here we demonstrate the successful removal through a separate incision site, different from the insertion site. The previous failed removal attempt resulted in the scar visible here. Obtain hemostasis and cover the incision with a 4x4 gauze and clean the remaining antiseptic off the arm. Close the incision by bringing the edges of the incision together with a sterile skin closure or a suture depending on the size of the incision. Apply pressure bandage dressing to minimize bleeding and bruising. If the client would like to have another implant inserted, choose an insertion site on the other arm or at least two to three centimeters higher up on the same arm to avoid another deep insertion along the same insertion tract. Tell the patient to keep her arm clean and dry with the dressing on for 24 to 48 hours. Discuss warning signs of infection such as excessive pain and heat. If the client would like to continue using contraception, counsel her on selecting another family planning method. Inform her that her return to fertility is immediate and to use another method as soon as possible.